Hello and welcome back to our channel. This video will be a part of our text formula series where we will cover new text formulas in Excel. We will cover the following formulas in separate videos. Text after, text before, text join and text split and possibly more. A single video about all of them would have been longer. So I decided to make separate videos so we can check them in detail. In today's video, we are diving into the text after formula, which is one of the Excel's powerful yet often overlooked function. If you ever struggle with extracting specific parts of a text string, you are in for a treat. Stick around because by the end of this video, you will be a text after formula pro. Most of you would know about text to column under the data tab and would think why would Excel release a formula where a feature already exists? The easiest answer to that question is, because you can't nest a feature with other features or formulas, but you can nest a formula with other formulas and then increase the usability of these functions manifold. So let's start with the text after formula. Let's start with the basics. The text after formula is a handy function that allows us to extract text from a given string starting right after a specified delimiter. Think of it as a pair of magic scissors that snips everything away before a certain point in your text. The syntax for text after is text after text comma delimiter comma instance number comma match mode comma match end comma if not found. Out of all these arguments text and delimiter are mandatory and rest are all optional. Let's quickly understand what each of them is there for. Text is the text you want to extract from. It can be a cell reference or the text itself. Delimiter is a character or substring after which you can extract the data. Instance number is the instance of the delimiter after which to extract text. When a negative number is used, Excel starts from the end of your text. Match mode defines the delimiter's case sensitivity. When it's not mentioned, Excel takes it as zero which means case sensitive and is the default setting. If it's mentioned as one, it's case insensitive. Match end treats the end of the text as delimiter. It is disabled by default. Here zero is the default and it matches the delimiter exactly as specified in the formula while one considers the end of text as delimiter. Now that we've got the syntax out of the way, let's move to some examples to help you understand it better. Let's start with a simple one. Here in this sheet, we have some names listed in our first column. We need to extract the last names from this list. Pretty easy. We start by writing a formula in this cell as text after. Then for our text, we reference it to our cell A2. And by the way, if you're wondering why it's not showing as A2, but this full name thing, that's because we are using the awesome Excel feature tables. And it's not only cell name shown inside the formulas, there's many more benefits of using tables. If you wish to find them, watch our video about 10 reasons why you should use them. I leave the link in the description and a card on the top right here. Now moving on to our delimiter. If you don't know already, delimiter is a character or string that separates your text. In this case, it's a space. So we put a space in double quotes like this. That's all what is needed in this formula and we can finish it. Press enter and all the last names are extracted. You know, this feature where I wrote this formula once and it was pasted in all the cells that followed? Another awesome feature of the tables. So now we have all the last names neatly collected in this column here. Easy, right? Let's move on to next example. This time we have our names as last name comma first name a common way of listing names in some parts of the world. So this time, instead of a space, we have a comma and a space. Nothing serious, we use comma and space as our delimiter. So now our formula becomes text after, then reference to this cell here and use comma and space as our delimiter in double quotes. Press enter and we are done. Don't worry, we don't have super simple examples like these. We are just getting warmed up. Let's move on to the next one. This time, we have their full names and their roles in a school. But the role is simply not mentioned. It has space before 
and after and also has a dash and then a space too. And we need to extract the rule from this. So we write our formula as, again, text after, reference to our text, and use space, then write role. Space, a dash, and another space, close brackets, and enter. And what's this? We have a hash and error. That's because we have used a smaller R where we should have used a capital R or let's use match mode. So we go in our formula to edit it and put a comma. And now we are at the instance number. We want to skip this. So we put a comma. And now we are at the match mode. And remember, here 0 is for case sensitive. And 1 is for case insensitive match. And since we have been a bit careless today and forgot to use a capital R in our delimiter, let's do 1. Close brackets and done. Here we have all the rules extracted from our list. This time, we have our last name, comma, first name, comma, role, comma, age. Wow, this guy is a principal at 25. But it's a fake data. He can have it. We can let it go. So this time, we will go through this data and extract two sets. Role, dash, age, and age only. And we will use the instance number argument to achieve this. Let's write our formula. Text after, select our text, comma, our delimiter is a comma and a space, so we put it in double quotes. Now, how many of our delimiters in this case, comma, are there before the data that we need? Let's have a look. 1 and 2. So we put our instance number as 2 and done. Now we have role, comma, age. It doesn't look all that good. We should have a hyphen in between the role and the age. That should look more professional. So let's digress a bit and use a new formula, substitute. It's a simple formula that substitutes a character or a string in your text with something else that you need. So let's edit our current formula and start our formula with substitute. And for its text argument, we leave our text after formula, close brackets, comma. For old text, we will mention comma and space in double quotes because this is what we need replaced. And for new text, we will mention a hyphen with a space before and after and again in double quotes. Close brackets and done. Now this looks much better. You could have done it with find and replace as well. But using find and replace would have meant you will have to do it again and again every time new data comes in. This way, it will serve you no matter how many time you add data to it. Let's move to our next required data, which is age. By now, you must know what we need to do. Spot on. Just change the instance number. So now our formula is text after, reference to our text, use comma and space as our delimiter and mention 3 as our instance number. And here we have the age, neatly mentioned in the cells. You know, if you don't want to have ears here, you can remove them by substitute. Let's quickly do that. So now we start our formula by substitute and again, we use our text after formula as a text here, close brackets, comma. For our old text, we will use space, ears in double quotes. And since we don't want anything as our new text, we simply use double quotes and close brackets. Now we have just the numbers. Let's just check that they are numbers and not text because of our formulas. Let's go to the last column and add, let's say 20 to all these numbers. If they are text, Excel will give an error. And here we are. All of them are numbers, so job done. If you wish to extract from the end, you can also use the instance numbers in negative. For instance, in our first task here, to get the age instead of the formula we used, we can also use this formula. Text after, reference to our text, use comma in double quotes as our delimiter, and then since we want the values after the last delimiter, we will use minus 1 here. This can be helpful if you have many delimiters and it's easier to get the count right from the end. Life isn't fair, so you may not always get data formatted in a standard way. What I mean to say is, not every time you will get your delimiter as standard commas. Your data might be sourced from different locations, prepared by different people, and according to their individual preferences, they might be using a comma, full stop, semicolon, or even a hyphen as a delimiter like in our example here. 
Here we have a mix of delimiters. We have comma as the most used, then we have a semicolon in A6 and 19, hyphen in A8 and A24, and a full stop or period in A14. In situations like these, you can use different formulas with each delimiter separately, but then what's the point of watching my videos if I can't show you an easy way around problem like these? So let's write our formula that will cover all these delimiters single-handedly. Don't worry, it's not a complex nested formula, it's pretty simple. We start with text after, reference our text here, and when we get to the delimiter part, we use the curly brackets. You will find them right next to the P key on your keyboard. At least that's where it is on my keyboard, but I am using a QWERTY layout. You might be using a different one, so you might have to look for it. Now we use the different delimiters separated by a comma in here just like in our formula in double quotes. Just remember, in our example here, we have space before every delimiter. So we have to add that too. We start by the comma in double quotes, then a comma to separate it. The next delimiter, which is a semicolon, double quotes, and space and semicolon, comma, then we move to hyphen, and lastly, space and full stop or period in double quotes. Now we have covered all the delimiters and now we close our curly brackets and since our formula is completed, close brackets and press enter. We are done. We have our result with a single formula. There will be times where you will get error while using your formula. The most common one is hash NA, which you will come across when delimiter used in your text is not present in your formula. Like in this example here, which is the same data set from our last example, but this time we have a hash NA error. Why did this happen? Because we have removed the period from our delimiters in our formula. In most cases, you can rectify this by simply adding that delimiter in the formula, but there will be cases where that is not an option. So you can leave it at that or use the if not found argument like this. We can skip instance number, match mode, match end, and in an if not found argument, let's write new delimiter, of course in double quotes and close brackets. Now we have the hash NA error out. This is more of a trick than an example. Let's say in our example, where we checked for multiple delimiters, there are so many different ones that we can't really get them all in one go. You can let your formula run and it will return a hash NA error. Like in this cell here, if I change the delimiter to a slash, we will get a hash NA error. You can fix your formula by filtering out all these errors and then adding these delimiters to your formula. But what if no delimiter is used? Let's delete this slash sign and we are still stuck with the hash NA error. In such cases, we have an option to return the original text. Let me show you how. We'll edit our current formula and add our instance number as minus 1. Skip the match mode and mention the match end as 1, which means match end and finish our formula. And here we have the full text as the result of our formula. Now what has happened is, when we set our instance number to minus 1, we want to search from right to left and at the same time when we set our match end to 1, we treat the end of the string as the delimiter. So when we are searching backwards, the beginning of our text becomes the end. And then if a delimiter is not found, our original value is returned. This was our last example for the text after formula and I hope by now you have a pretty good understanding about how to implement it in your projects. Before I go, let me give you a tip. You see here, we have a space before our result. Just by looking, it's hardly noticeable. But it's not a good practice to have messy data. So we are going to use the trim function before our text after formula to get rid of this. Like this. Now it looks better. I hope you know what trim function does. You don't? I gotta make a video about this then. Keep watching this space so you don't miss it. For now, I leave the link of the practice sheet so you can try your hands on this formula to your heart's content. That's it for this video. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more Excel tips and tricks. Drop a comment down below if you have any questions or if there is a specific topic 
you'd like us to cover next. I'll catch you in the next video, probably about another text function or maybe something else. Until then, happy spreadsheeting. Thank you.